You know, we've been trying to get a Surgeon General confirmed for the last 18 months, and we can't get him through the Senate. But secondly, we have to remember that the budget cuts, and I have to just say, they were the right. Republicans who Absol cut the budget by 44% for hospital preparedness programs, yep. cut NIH by over 10%, and CDC by 17%. Yeah, the Republicans did it. All right, folks, before we get to that nonsense with the man himself, Glenn Kessler, Washington Post columnist who runs the famous Fact Checker blog, uh, I, I want you to go vote. Um, we still have a, a time to, to vote in and weigh in on this. Should the U.S. have a travel ban on West African nations? I want you to go to Newsmax.com slash polls to cast your vote now, Newsmax.com slash polls. Now, Glenn, welcome aboard. Uh, you wrote a piece, a definitive piece, uh, at the Washington Post at your fine uh, column uh, that, that gave this, this ridiculous, uh, repeated over and over claim for Pinocchios. Yes, I did do that. All right, so, so let's start with some of the things that you, you talk about here. First of all, George Bush, uh, under Bush, he did a lot of good uh, for the, the, those, uh, those budgets, the NIH and the CDC, correct? Uh, well, yes, actually, he, he, he really boosted the budget of the NIH, for instance. Uh, you know, he, um, as you know, President Bush was also very concerned about the AIDS crisis, spent, spent a lot of money over the AIDS, uh, deal with AIDS in Africa, sub-Saharan Africa. And as part of that effort, they also increased a lot of spending at NIH. You know, it was also part of the war on terrorism. So the budget, the budget has been kind of flat. The last 10 years uh, since uh, Bush boosted it, but it was a big, big boost. It was um, almost 50 percent, I think. Right. And then let's take it to the first two years of, uh, and I don't know if you addressed this in your column, but the fact is the first two years uh, the Democrats had Bar of, of Obama's first term, 09 and 010, they had a, a Democratic Senate, a Democratic House, and a Democratic President. And I don't recall them, uh, you know, launching a, a campaign or signing a bill uh, uh, that uh, that boosted the funding for these two organizations either. Well, uh, to be fair, the stimulus bill did have some extra funding for NIH. I mean, it was a one-time boost. I mean, it was like for all over across the federal government. All right, all right. That, okay. But, but yes, but since since that, you know, excluding that, which was a you know uh, you know considered one-time emergency spending. Right. Uh, you know, one of the things that I found was that uh, uh, for at least two or three of the years, President Obama cut the budget and then Congress, right. either the Democrats right. or the Republicans in Congress, then ended up giving more than what the president had requested. That's what I was going to say, because as you point out in your piece, uh, in fact, Barack Obama has routinely asked for less uh, or, or asked for an amount that then has been raised uh, by a, on a bipartisan way by the Congress for these or, these organizations. Right. Well, it's in part the, the, you know, it's frankly, it's a bit of the game that they play here in Washington because, you know, you're an administration. You want to show that you're really committed to cutting spending. What do you do? But you pick things that you know Congress will not cut you, let, allow you to cut spending for. <laughs> yeah, well, but, you know, it's, it's all a game and it's all a word game. And they're trying to uh, pin this, uh, you know, on the Republicans. And, and again, how, uh, l let me ask you this. I mean, how is it, would it even be possible, uh, unless the, the, the Republicans, quote unquote, shut down the government over this, how could the Republicans, you know, cut uh, anything unilaterally when they only control one, one, one branch, one, only the, the House and not the Senate and not the White House? How could the blame be put on them at all? Well, right. I mean, that was the, there was particularly that, that ad that, you know, ended with the phrase, Republican cut, kill. kill. Yeah. It, right. And so, you know, the, the fact of the matter is, there, you know, even the sequester, which Democrats try to... Uh, that was Obama's say, idea. <laughs> yes, it was. It was. The, it was the White House's idea. This is something that they um, um, had had embraced, and uh, and then kind of tried to wash their hands of. So uh, you, you so you write, and then this is you know you you've given for Pinocchio certainly many many times over the uh, years. Uh, but your first line in in the the Pinocchio test uh, portion of your column is on many levels this line of attack is absurd. Uh, that that's pretty strong language for you. Uh, yes, I didn't hold back because it is. I mean, it's you know, I mean, it's it, it, as you noted, it's the Republicans have one branch of the government. It takes two to tango, or three, you know, House, Senate, and and uh, and the and the White House. And uh, you know, it's 
I mean, the other thing is that they, they, you know, these cuts are kind of, which you know, uh, uh, you know, there were cases where the administration wanted to cut, and Congress added more cases where Congress might have wanted to cut, right. and so forth. But there wasn't also either a specific thing where the Republicans said, let's cut the funding for Ebola. Right. And by the, by the way, Glenn, uh, uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, when confronted by Chris Wallace uh, on Fox News Sunday, said, I, I don't say this. I, I haven't been saying this. You know, I haven't been making that claim. So I think you've, you've actually shut her up a little bit. Well, if, uh, if, I, if I manage to get uh, politicians to, to shut their mouths, then I guess it's, a, it's been a good day. <laughs> All right, Glenn. Hey, always great to talk to you, my friend. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Anytime. Glenn Kessler, ladies and gentlemen, Washington Post, uh, and read his fact check column or blog, however you want to label it. And uh, folks, uh, we will be back with Newsmax Deputy Health Editor Nick Tate after the break. But before we go, let's take a look at the uh, hotly contested Colorado Senate race with our countdown to the midterm update. Seat safety. It's not something politicians like to gamble with, but U.S. Representative Cory Gardner is doing just that. He opted not to seek re-election for a congressional seat. Political analysts say he was almost guaranteed to win in order to take on Colorado's senior senator, Democrat Mark Udall. The GOP needs to win just six seats while not losing any others in order to shift the power in the Senate to red. Udall's seat is one Republicans targeted early on. According to a Quinnipiac University survey, Udall went into this matchup with a disapproving electorate, something Republicans hope to capitalize on. Even with the unfavorable numbers, Udall has held on against Gardner in the polls. Quinnipiac shows he's even gaining ground among women voters. But that may not be enough to close the slowly widening gap between him and Gardner. Experts say Udall is going to need a big surge in the days leading up to November 4th, especially now that absentee ballots are out and the votes are coming in. It's a big task. There aren't any more debates, and Republican super PACs are throwing money at this race for a last-minute advertising blitz. Democrats, however, are hopeful changes to Colorado's election laws will help swing things in their favor. Voters no longer have to be registered to vote on Election Day. They can now do that at a polling place, a big advantage to whichever candidate runs the best get-out-the-vote operation. 